I think like everything, there is a spectrum, you know, from one extreme to another. And I guess for today's video, we're going to kind of talk about all the different types of capsule wardrobes that land within that spectrum. So if you're somebody that has a capsule wardrobe or is thinking about creating a capsule wardrobe, then today's video is for you. Hey, ride with me if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like. Hey, ride with me if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like. All right, hey there fashion friends, welcome to today's episode. Whether you're new here or have been around for a while, I'm very happy that you've joined me here today. Today's video, we're looking at different capsule wardrobes. So these are five approaches I think you can take to a capsule wardrobe. I think the sort of stigma with capsule wardrobes is that it is only for minimalists or people that live, you know, a minimalist lifestyle. And I don't think that's true. I think that really anybody that wants an efficient wardrobe can have a capsule wardrobe because that's really what a capsule wardrobe is in my opinion is an efficient wardrobe because it's a wardrobe that is refined curated and has that added function because everything in your capsule wardrobe usually circles back to each other so everything's working together it's very intentional very well thought out which then just increases that efficiency if you haven't seen any of my previous videos on capsule wardrobes on how to build a capsule wardrobe and lots of other <laughs> details on capsule wardrobes i'll make sure to link the playlist down below so that you can catch up on that okay with that let's get started so the first one is a minimalist wardrobe so number one's kind of like the far end of the spectrum right? this is sort of like a beginner's capsule wardrobe and what a minimalist capsule wardrobe is basically is kind of a general wardrobe usually this wardrobe ends up with people that are sort of like myself who uh, started out as a minimalist and started to pare down and be a lot more intentional with anything they were bringing into their home and so for me when i became a minimalist i decluttered the dickens out of my um wardrobe and kind of started over with just a certain amount and really dissected what it was I was left with and realized what it was I really loved to wear. And so then going forward, I knew the pieces that I loved and the pieces that I was gonna bring in and really was then a lot better at filtering. So it's really just about kind of like an ongoing process of just that mindset of being super intentional and sort of holding your wardrobe to a certain parameter, but sort of having more breathing room than I would say a capsule wardrobe because it is a little bit more of a broader thing. I would say it's a lot more loose on the structure of it and just still very intentional, still very efficient because you're still always thinking about like, does this work with this or that? Rule of thumb with this sort of approach is when you're buying a new piece, you're thinking, okay, I need this to go with at least seven outfits in my closet. It then kind of by default, will then make sure that that piece is going to circle back to everything in your wardrobe. I'd say the biggest kind of parameter to kind of keep in mind with a minimalist wardrobe, kind of the cap, the boundary, um, to kind of not let it get out of hand. If you don't aren't aware of everything in your closet and aware of how it can work with everything in your closet, then it's starting to get to a point where it's maybe not a minimalist wardrobe anymore. Number two is the multiple module wardrobe. If you're not familiar with what a module is, it's basically a little micro wardrobe or mini wardrobe within a capsule wardrobe or within a minimalist wardrobe. And these modules normally have some sort of focus, whether that focus is for a style mood, uh, for a color mood, a print, or specific functions or specific occasions. So this is a great kind of option for somebody that has that office life that's actually going into an office and needs those kind of office attire, or that office wear. But then also like gardens on the weekends, you know, you need your like gardening, you know, weekend sort of gear or if you're somebody that likes color and you want to be able to have these focused little modules on specific colors so you know that each module is going to work with these you know bold colors or same thing with like a print if there's specific prints that you really love uh, maybe you're somebody like me who really loves stripes and you want to make sure you have like a little module that works with the stripes then this is going to definitely be an option for you now with this though i think the thing that people aren't quite sure of is 
does each module have its own specific pieces and like that's that for each module. I would say, yeah, you, you could go that route of having just really specific pieces for those modules and there's no sort of crossover. But I would say if you really want that efficiency that you can definitely have those kind of crossovers. So just meaning like having like the same black pant throughout different modules or like a certain shirt that's, you know, in a few of your modules. Number three is the foundational capsule wardrobe. It's a capsule wardrobe that is sort of the foundation to your whole wardrobe, whatever that might be. Maybe it's that you have a minimalist wardrobe, but you have a sort of capsule wardrobe that is just these foundational pieces. Like maybe it's basic classic pieces that are the foundation and then everything else sort of works around that foundational capsule wardrobe. Maybe it's that you have the module capsule wardrobe with the little modules sort of revolving around this, the foundational capsule wardrobe, or I'd say with a foundational capsule wardrobe, you can, do this as a sort of jump off point. So I've done videos on, you know, the essential capsule wardrobe, meaning the sort of pieces that are just classic and timeless, uh, have a bit of style, have a bit of edge that are just really never gonna go to style and can really work with every single style type out there. Um, they can really be translated in a bunch of different ways. I think you can go a long way with these essential foundational pieces. But then what's great with that is it then allows for you to easily build off of that foundation and sort of bring in pieces that are a little bit more personal to you and your style. In a way, you're sort of using a foundational capsule wardrobe as your anchor pieces. So if you've watched my previous videos on how to build a capsule wardrobe, I speak to the first step being choosing your anchor pieces, the pieces that you're going to revolve the rest of the wardrobe around. So I think that's a great way of looking at a foundational capsule wardrobe as sort of the anchor pieces to a general you know, the general wardrobe. Okay, number four is the seasonal capsule wardrobe. I think this is kind of one of the more well-known uh, type of capsule wardrobes that a lot of people do. And so ultimately what that is, it just means that you have a capsule wardrobe for each season. Now, there's a few different approaches again that you can go this route. You can kind of do it where each season specifically has a capsule wardrobe. Like that is like, it's got its set wardrobe, but that is that. Or it could be that you sort of, again, have a sort of foundation um, that you then sort of just rotate some of the pieces out and rotate some pieces back in each season, just depending on the seasons. If you're somebody that lives in a four season type place like this gal in Minnesota, where you definitely have very specific four seasons, uh, yeah, you've got to change out those pieces each season. So you can go that route as well. We're just kind of rotating certain pieces, not the whole entire thing. I think again, it's a great way to have efficiency, but along with that, I think it's a really fun way to sort of give your wardrobe a refresh every season. So for me, I store away all my really heavy, thick sweaters every spring and summer. And I get super excited in the fall to then pull out those sweaters. And it feels like I've got new pieces because I haven't seen those pieces in so long. Uh, so it kind of just reignites that excitement um, for those pieces that you've, you've had for a really long time. So I definitely think that's a great approach, especially if you're somebody that likes that change and likes the change out. It's a great way to help you sustain um, you know, that kind of urge for something new. Um, it'll help you to not feel like you need to bring in so much new stuff. And number five, this is the essentials capsule wardrobe. This I would say is sort of the more extreme version in the sense of if you're somebody that really wants to go minimal and efficient, maybe you're somebody that lives in a really small apartment, you don't have a lot of storage. Maybe you're just somebody that's just sick of having a big massive closet full of just clothes and you want a really nice refined closet that has all this space and looks like a showroom and you just want that efficiency, then I think this is definitely a wardrobe for you. And there's lots of people out there that have this. They just have their essential 30 pieces and that is that and they are good to go. The structure of this I would say is it's very specific. You are choosing pieces that are extremely multi-purpose that are going to give you function all year round. Um, they're going to be things that you can layer up, layer down, um, style this way, style that way. 
Uh, so everything really has multiple purposes. There's nothing that's just gonna be very, you know, one dimensional. I don't even know if that's the right. You know what I'm saying. You're not gonna have pieces that just have one purpose. So it is then crazy what you can really get out of the 30 pieces. I would say as well, as long as you can get 30 outfits out of a wardrobe, that's all you really need. I've talked about it before. I outfit repeat all the time. Like there's times where I get excited about an outfit and wear it multiple days in a row. So if you have a wardrobe that gives you at least 30 outfits, you're gonna be covered because that means that you're not gonna outfit repeat for 30 days and who's gonna really keep track of um, whether or not you're repeating outfits within a month. The fun thing about this as well is I feel like this definitely gives you way more room for choosing really good quality pieces. You can spend a little bit more for those really special pieces, those investment pieces. I speak to the pieces that you choose for your capsule wardrobes in general as investment pieces. And I would say for the essentials, uh, you definitely want to make sure you're really investing in the best pieces possible for you and for the wardrobe and really knowing that you're going to have quality pieces that are going to age really well, they're gonna wear really well, and that you're gonna love for a really long time as well. All right, my friends, so those are the five different capsule wardrobes within the spectrum, um, I guess within my spectrum. <laughs> Definitely comment below and let me know what capsule wardrobe you may have or one that you're interested in, in creating or if there's one that maybe I didn't mention here, maybe there's one that you've sort of created or some sort of approach that I didn't mention here today, definitely let us know. Well, either way, I hope that you found today's video helpful or at least entertaining. And if you did, you know what to do. Give me that thumbs up, comment below, share with your friends and subscribe for future weekly episodes and click that little bell to get notified when I post my new episodes. You have a lovely, beautiful rest of your day. Stay healthy, stay safe, love and support each other. And we will definitely be chatting soon. Bye.